So three weeks ago, I made Z Fold for my daily driver. I picked it up and I was ecstatic, right? I was so happy. Went from my iPhone to the Z Fold 4. I actually went from my uh, iPhone to a Galaxy S22 Ultra to a Galaxy 22 Plus to a Z Fold. I was technically back to an iPhone to a Z Fold 4. And I was ecstatic because you guys do not know one of my favorite phones of all time is the Galaxy Z Fold 3. So I was like, oh my God, this is like the perfect just phone. I mean, this is Z Fold 3 better, right? Yeah, no. Um, I still cannot recommend this phone to anybody because even if, let's say, for example, you have a Z Fold 3, it's not worth the upgrade to get this phone. It really isn't. Now, at one point, a week ago, a week and a half ago, there was a sale on this phone. We could actually get this phone for pretty cheap. Uh, you could get it for like $1,500. It's a 512 gigabyte model. And you could also go ahead and get a case and other stuff with it. And it was actually really, really good. Well, that sale has now ended. So now the only sale you really get is you get... <laughs> I mean, sorry, it's not awful, but if you get the lowest version or any version, you get $300 off what the price tag used to be, which again, not bad, definitely decent, but nothing special, nothing to write home about pretty much, right? So you get a little bit of discount if you want to. I'm just going to say this right now and say it's loud and proud at this point. I just cannot see the reason why you buy this phone. And after three weeks of daily driving... I would tell you right now, I cannot see a difference between my Z Fold 3 and my Z Fold 4. I cannot. And if you put them side to side, other than the hinge, you're not going to see a difference. These phones are so, so, so similar. The biggest difference is the camera, the updated processing unit, um, Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, and that's pretty much it. The technical smaller size is a thing. Um, outside, inside display, exactly the same size. Technically, it's more durable inside display. That's it. So, because Samsung's actually going out of the way here, they're giving all the Z Fold 3, Z Fold 2, Android 12, and Android 12 L's taskbar. I just can't see the reason why you run this phone. And you guys, if you guys watch the channel, you already know how much I love to run Launcher 10. Launcher 10 is one of my favorite launchers of all time to run. I cannot get enough of Launcher 10. Launcher 10 cannot run on the Z Fold 4. I don't know why. I have no idea why. It works on every single Android phone. Galaxy S22 Ultra, Galaxy Note 21 um, Ultra, Galaxy Note 20 Ultra actually. Um, it runs on the Surface Zero 1, Surface Zero 2, um, the Opera 5 and 5G, every single phone. I actually do not have an Opera 5 and 5G, but I have seen it run on that. Four, it cannot run on Z Fold 4. I do not know why. So I've been rocking this standard default launcher because there are other launchers on Z Fold 4 that are decent, but I don't really like any of them. So I've been rocking the default launcher and it's been kind of ugly. So I got to say, like overall wise, I just can't see the recommendations on why you would go for this phone. You could literally get a Z Fold 3 right now on eBay for $800. You could probably get a 512GB version for like $900. You're saving four or $500 from buying this phone. So let's go ahead and look at the specs slash upgrades of this phone. Um, or what, I guess what they actually tell you, Samsung tells you. So obviously, yes, if you're looking at a Z Flip, it's going to be a little bit of difference, but if you're looking at a uh, full 3 5G, which right here, um, same exact battery, same exact wireless power share. Uh, the only difference is a one terabyte option versus just the 512 and 56 um, is a Gen 1 processor versus a Snapdragon 888. We're zooming along. Snapdragon 8 and is absolutely amazing. The Duo 2 runs it, and of course, the uh, Z Fold 3 runs it. And it's very, very fast, no issue at all. Uh, both of them have S Pen support. Apparently, it's supposed to have a better display, more durable display. Both of them have 5G. Uh, ultra wide cameras, yes. This actually does have a 12, as a 12, a 16, and a 12 
while this one no it's all my bad it has uh triple 12 megapixel cameras i'm thinking about the surface zero two it has tr triple 12 megapixel cameras it has but this one the z44 has a 50 a 12 and of course another 12 so it's 50 12 12 and then 10 on the front this one actually what i didn't realize that it has a 10 it doesn't have 12 12 so it has a 50 12 and 10 that's interesting um of course it does have a front display camera which is exactly the same it's 10 megapixels nothing different there um aperture it can go down to one f 1.8 f uh 2.2 and f 2.4 aperture is pretty much how much light is aligned in the camera so if you look at it how blurry the background is the lower the number is pretty much um yeah so flaw detection they all have it they all have captive fingerprint uh fingerprint readers they're both six point uh seven point six inch uh oled displays on the outside and inside can run 120 hertz um so yeah literally you can see how much similar these phones are the real difference is the storage option the processing unit more colors and less of a hinge it's it's crazy so like i said before i really thought after three weeks maybe after a long time i would start you know loving it and getting you know used to it but i still can't get used to it this case i stopped using it i used to really like this case and i actually reviewed it for the channel i just don't i didn't like it anymore and i know somebody commented down below and said like they like the fact the suction cups but the suction cups on the display always makes me think i'm gonna scratch the outside display and after having the Galaxy S22 Ultra, I learned how easily you can scratch a Gorilla Glass Victus display. And trust me, it's very easy. I didn't think it was that easy, but it's actually very easy. So I don't like this case at all. I mean, it is very cheap. So if you're trying to find a cheap wallet case, it works out. It just simply doesn't give you much. I mean, like I said before, I actually switched to the um, pen cover case don't have it on me right now it's over there but um which i'll review that in a separate video i kind of on the fence about that one too but this one only gives you like two card slots and one of those card slots obviously is your id so unless you walk around with one credit card or one debit card and an id and that's it this is probably not the case for you if you do probably the uh, case for you so like i said before my final review of this phone is i gave it when i first got it i gave it a 10 out of 10 I got to say, this phone is still a 10 out of 10 for the purpose I use it for, which obviously is just, uh, you know, a Z Fold 3's upgrade. But if I'm looking at this from a third-party view, from a brand-new client view, a, a brand-new person about to buy this phone, I'm going to consider this probably a 7 out of 10 because the value for your money is just simply not there for this phone. Um, it's a great phone. But for the value, you would probably be better off going with a Z Fold 3. My personal opinion, tell me down below your thoughts and opinions. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.